Hi everyone, I'm Alessia. I do my research in cognitive neuroscience of language, and I'm currently doing my PhD here in the lab in Paris. I usually talk a lot about work life balance being an indispensable part of the research life, but this time we're not only talking about it, but actually doing. I love integrating workations, which are working but also being on vacation or away from your desk at least, into my daily routine. Those are my favorite way to change the setting and to get more productive without sacrificing efficiency of your work. Today we are heading to a beautiful city of Barcelona to spend some time under the sun and, of course, to visit our friends. I will let you watch the first clips of this productive trip and then we will move on directly to discussing productive routine that helps me to conceptualize projects and move from raw ideas to putting real research projects in place. Of course, you can skip directly to the content part. Stay tuned! I just got back from Barcelona and honestly, it's been an amazing time. I spent there one week and a half and I got to tell you I love the city. It was just amazing for the change. I don't think I ever want to live there for a long period of time just because the vibe is so different. But at the same time, the fact that the vibe is super different allowed me to reconsider some of my thoughts and simply try to make my own working routine more balanced. It has been amazing to go to the beach in the morning or after work, spend some time with friends and also just sitting in the cafe and working from there. It's been insane. That's why I love so much to integrate work patients into my daily working routine. And also August, in France, I told you, everyone left Paris. The streets are empty, there's no one in the lab. That means that there are no emails, there are no meetings, there are no Zoom calls, and you can completely dedicate some time to deep work, focused work, conceptualizing your projects, and maybe even writing. And that's what I did during this past month. And today I thought maybe I could just summarize it in five steps and share it with you because that might be useful to you as well. So the first thing that I love to do before even trying to put a project in place is to create some kind of a document, which would basically be an outline of a paper. If you have any ideas about what kind of method you're going to use, maybe what kind of corpus or stimuli you're going to use, what kind of analysis you're going to do, or maybe you're replicating someone else's paper, you can just copy paste some of the method and then in the introduction section i would put some of the key references with the main fundings very general topic and the second thing i would do is to start piloting try to create tiny pilot experiments more conditions test basic hypothesis test different paradigms and test a few ideas you can treat this stage as a playground try to be creative and experiment with it my third step would be to create a spreadsheet with literature review i would create columns corresponding to uh, the main ideas for example that would be a link the name and then also what kind of stimuli they used what kind of design how many participants were recruited what kind of participants and some of the results in several columns and then each line would be a paper i use this kind of method for most of my writings and it's been just amazing to get a main idea of the project of the field because when you read you always forget the information i think and Andy Stapleton suggested to use the PowerPoint and to put one 
paper on one slide what i did previously was also using a google doc but eventually i decided that spreadsheets were the best for me just because it can give you a grasp of the whole literature in the field in a very short form sometimes it's not complete but you can easily look at the main information all right so you read your literature you identify a gap in the literature that you would be able to fill in with your study you did some pilots you basically work on the optimization of the paradigm of selecting the exact conditions and finalizing your hypothesis at this stage you've got to be as precise as possible in your study you can ask several questions and it would be extremely useful to formulate them in a very transparent way and then underneath each question you could also write your hypothesis your potential answer to this question with some of the justification from the literature this will help you to be as clear with the goals of your study as possible without trying to create the hypothesis after you get the results okay well so now you collected your data here comes the most interesting part to do the analysis i think sometimes i met people who rush their conclusions again i am just a pc student with those preliminary results I would go to all the supervisors, the PIs that are relevant to this project, maybe different people who worked on the similar issue, and I would ask their suggestions about how to analyze data, maybe what kind of additional information I could include in my model that could be changed in the future experiments, as well as further directions are also extremely interesting. So I would go and seek advice, not only from your supervisor per se, but also from everyone else. Once the data is there, you know the background other people can help you interpret your data from the new angles so that's it i hope this tiny summary of what i do in order to conceptualize and pursue projects would be interesting to you follow along for more tips and also just to see where this journey brings me and i will see you very very soon in my next video see you bye today including my first podcast meeting so we have this organizational thing with the potential speaker of the first pilot episode episode minus one for today. Look at the situation here. It's great being home after the vacation, except for one thing. When I come back, the house is a mess, a total mess. And I saw this method on YouTube that you have to set a timer on a very short time period and just do whatever you can do, but just within that short period of time. So I'm aiming for 15 minutes now. That's gonna be short, but I'm gonna do the max of what I can. Mm -hmm. 
Very soon, in the next video, I will share more of Paris during the time of Olympics. So stay tuned and in the meantime, have fun. See you very soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.